Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Angerstar Wealth, the morning show. Welcome to a Friday morning, and Mike is in costume, if you can see his jacket there. Hopefully, you know immediately who he is, but if not, I will let him introduce that character to you. Uh, but I'm going to talk, first of all, this morning about some alternate investments. When you think alternate investments, think uh, Bitcoin, think, uh, you know, private equity, venture capital, commercial real estate, venture, you know, stuff like that. I'm going to lead with that because that's kind of boring because then Mike is going to go into character uh, as the NVIDIA CEO and, and talk a little bit about that individual. And then uh, he's going to close with something that's near and dear to a lot of us, especially those of us have kids that go to concerts all the time, or maybe you go to concerts all the time. I don't know. But you know how those stupid ticket the with the fees i mean there's fees everywhere right it's like yes please the 200 dollars concert ticket why am i paying 309 dollars after i agree to buy the 200 dollars ticket right well there's a lawsuit out there mike has found a looked into it he's also found a wall street journal article that kind of talks about the fees where they're going and hopefully maybe we get some relief uh from this so pretty excited about that stuff this morning we are financial education presentations you have to do your own due diligence for acting upon anything you hear in this presentation more disclaimer information is available at anchorstarwealth.com the opinions expressed are mine and Mike's alone. Let's start with some exciting news out of Schwab this morning. <laughs> Excuse me, going to Wealth Advisor is the uh, .com for the article. But Schwab had an investor day yesterday. It was in institutional investor uh, day, so we don't get invited. However, they did announce they're going to have alternates listed on their Schwab platform. What does that mean for you that are clients of ours that are on the Schwab platform? I don't know. I don't know if they're going to release that to the retail world so we can at least see it. I don't know if we'll be able to see it as a platform or if it'll just be uh, for a select few. But <clears throat> they're listing alternates on Schwab, which is kind of cool. Right right now, if you have uh, either Blackstone, uh, B Read, or B Cred, it shows up on your platform. But if you're in like Moonshots, uh, it does not, right? You have to hold it somewhere else. So exciting news, more to follow. It just means that uh, alternatives are going a little more mainstream. If you've talked with us about alternatives, or if you if you want to, please bring it up. Uh, some of them do have qualifications. Some are up at the five million level. Uh, some are at the one million level, and then some are at the like seventy thousand level uh, for as far as uh, you know assets. So you know, pretty pretty ach achievable at different levels. But you know, we like uh, B REIT, which is the Blackstone uh, real estate one. This one has struggled with interest rates, but as you know, if you think on a buy low, sell high mentality, that means it's been kind of beaten up. It's still kicking off, you know, 10% euro, you know, annually since inception, but it's down right now. And this is, you know, poised to go higher uh, once the uh, once the interest rates start to uh, drop down, whenever that is. So uh, like I was telling a client yesterday, I would rather be three months early than three minutes late uh, getting into some of this stuff. So you want to get into real estate now before those things drop, before the interest rates drop, if you will. Also, be cred out there if you want to be going the private credit space. Again, 10% annualized. So when you see these things, these are largely institutions that invest this way. And what Blackstone and Schwab now is allowing folks like you and I, the retail investor, to invest like institutions, the Harvard Endowment Fund, the Longhorn Foundation, you know, the, the big billions of, of dollars of folks of institutional money. This is how they invest and allows us to hop in on that. Uh, for qualified purchasers out there, if that sounds uh, like a term you haven't heard, that means it's probably not you. Uh, it's 5 million and above is the qualification. If you if you are a qualified purchaser, then you can get into the BXPE, which is a brand new uh, Blackstone hedge fund. It's literally only been around since January. Uh, so it's kind of super excited to see where that goes. I currently do not have any uh, clients in BXPE right now, nor do I have any of my money in BXPE right now. Uh, we also have commercial real estate. Don't know why the map's not coming up there, but uh, you know, we have a new Braunfels product project that's going final and going to close at the end of June, but I do have others available if you are interested in commercial real estate sort of opportunities. And then of course, venture capital. Uh, if you're interested in that, I can say up to, you know, 5% of your portfolio uh, into, venture into venture capital is fine. Uh, it is a black box. So you put your money in and, you know, you get updates and stuff, but you really don't know what's going on and it may take years before you see that return, right? So it's that true angel investing, you know, long-term uh, high high risk, high return 
uh, kind of uh, investment. So if any of that interests you, reach out to your advisor, talk to any of us about it, and we'll get you uh, at least educated on it until you can see if it is right for you. So that's all I've got. Now let's hand it off to Mike and talk about some NVIDIA and who, what character he is today. There we go. All right. Can you see the picture? Uh, hopefully you can see my leather jacket. I was out of the Anchor Star Wealth uniform today wearing the leather jacket in tribute to Jensen Huang, who is the CEO and founder or one of the founders of NVIDIA, who blew it away yesterday as we spoke about, even though the markets went down. But I thought, let's look at this guy because yesterday he personally made uh, you know, you know, seven billion dollars on his his, <laughs> his stock. He's worth now ninety billion. So his his net worth has went from three billion a few years ago to ninety billion. That's a that's a pretty good return. I like that. A lot that. of billions. Yeah. Yeah. But but one thing, you know, I, I you know, in five years he went from three billion to ninety billion. That's you know, that's that is a great return. But what I, what I like about this, and I was reading some uh, a little bit more about him. Besides him owning 86 million shares of NVIDIA, 3.5% of the company, but he founded, and this is what I wanted to highlight, he founded it in 1993 to build GPUs for 3D gaming. Steve, what were you doing in 1993? Oh man, 93, I was uh, early, early stage Air Force years. There you go, and I, and I, you know, I just graduated college. You know, why didn't I think about building GPUs for playing <laughs> games? I mean, I played games. I just didn't think about doing it. And and that's something that I like about a founder like this. It, you know, hey, this is a lot of money. I mean, 90 billion. And, and still, he's not the top, but I'm going to hit that in a minute. But, you know, this guy founded the company. He's been there. It's taken how many years? That's like a long time, 30 some years uh, to get here. And, and now he finally really sees it take off in the last few um, you know, with chat GPT and you can even see right down here, it says it really took off in late 2022 when open AI released chat GPT. So, you yeah. know, is this the next Elon Musk? You know, I, I know we you know, hear a lot from Elon, Elon Musk before Tesla took off. Um, and now we hear him, you know, in a lot of other places, but, you know, Jensen Huang is a name to remember. So 90 billion He's worth 90 billion. And I was thinking back to when Steve covered the national debt in each person, <laughs> um, you know, every, every baby, every person owes $103,000. So I thought Jensen Huang, you know, maybe he has a love to pay down the national debt. I don't know for sure. I tr I did send a friend request to him on LinkedIn. I have not heard back yet. Nothing from him. Back, yeah. yeah, I know. Shocking. But <laughs> if, you know, taking this all into account and trying to put this money in perspective, if Jensen Huang really loved North Dakota, he could pay off the national debt for all the people of North Dakota, the entire state. There you and, go. And, I, and so I thought, well, if Jensen could do that, maybe if he could get the momentum going, Elon Musk could love the people of West Virginia and pay that off. And Jeff Bezos could pay off the people for Nebraska. I did the calculations. Uh, Elon and Jeff, you know, make about twice or are worth twice as much as Jensen. But if we could just get them to do that, I, you know, I don't know that they would. Steve, what do you think? I, I don't know. You can ask him once they accept your uh, friend request on LinkedIn. <laughs> well, I'll run it by him. So transitioning over a little bit. So uh, before I get into uh, Ticketmaster and all the tickets, so what about Taylor Swift? You know, what, what's Taylor Swift worth? Who could she pay off for? So Steve, I looked up Taylor Swift's net worth and a little bit over a billion. She could pay off half of Lebanon, Ohio. Half of Maybe. Lebanon, okay. Well, Lebanon yeah. would appreciate that, yeah. Yeah, so anyways, I just thought, thought I'd put that in perspective for the national debt. So uh, since the market sold off yesterday after NVIDIA's great earnings, I thought I'd bring it back into perspective because the media would be like, oh my gosh, what a sell off. Right now, the NASDAQ, which which we tend to look at a lot because uh, it's more of the tech side, I'll, I'll scroll up and scroll down. We are back where we were on Monday. So this is the five day graph of the NASDAQ. On Monday, we were trading right around here and you can see the spike up to all time highs at the beginning of yesterday and the sell off and the recovery today a little bit and we are back. So. You know, when you when you see the media hyping all that and you say, wow, you know, 
what a big drop or, you know, these are headlines, you know, and if we just look at a year to date, you can see we're, we're, right. we're still pretty much <laughs> at, at all time high. So anyways, just wanted to bring that perspective. So let me get into a, the second topic here, which is tickets. The Department of Justice is suing to break up uh, Live Nation, who is the owner of Ticketmaster. And as Steve said, you know, there's lots of you know, we're always buying tickets and, and I thought, how much do we actually pay for these things and, and where does the money go? And there was a, a great uh, graph that I love in the Wall Street Journal today that shows when you pay $100 for a ticket, where does it go and what other things do you incur at a concert? So now, now this, take a step back and somewhere in there you see Ticketer, which is Ticketmaster and they're getting targeted. And I'm gonna I'm gonna make a confession to you, Steve. A couple of years okay. ago, since I, since I'm a uh, I, I am a season Bengals ticket holder, I got an email from from Ticketmaster that said, "Hey, you are special. We're gonna give you chance to buy Taylor Swift tickets before they go on sale to the public or or in this group." And I was like, "Okay, that's well, I'll check that out. You know, you you have to log in at like 10 o'clock on Friday morning, and you gotta you know, a 20 minute window to buy tickets. Yeah. And, and I, I want to say my Bengal season tickets for one ticket, I don't know, 700 bucks, 800 bucks that a few years ago, it might be a little bit more now, but um, I logged in on time. I clicked and I saw Taylor Swift tickets. I can't remember if I could buy two or four, but let's just say it was two. And they were like $400 each. And I was like, I couldn't, I couldn't click buy. Cause I'm not a Taylor. <laughs> I was like $400 for each ticket. I'm about to spend almost as much as I buy for one Bengals ticket for Taylor Swift. So I was like, eh, you know, maybe I could sell these. I mean, there's no way it's worth $400 for me to go. So I was like, nah, I'm not buying. I kid you not, Steve, that when those tickets actually did go on sale to the public, they were going for like a thousand dollars each. Yeah. I, I, I should have invested the 400 each and, and bought it, but but that's that's what happens. And and so I was getting it through the Ticketmaster. Now, what Ticketmaster does, and, and they're getting attacked here in Live Nation, and, and they, they do have somewhat of a monopoly here. But what they do is they do control. So when, when I buy a ticket, I know I'm getting a solid ticket. It downloads on my phone. I show it at the venue. It works. If I want to resell my Bengals tickets, I can resell them. I, the money comes in. I have trust in the system. Because it because it, it has worked. But when you look at the fees, and this is what the, the government's going to attack them for, um, or is attacking, you know, when you look at the fees, and this is the Wall Street Journal article, uh, this is not Ticketmaster, they are only getting, you know, 5% of that ticket, even though you see fee, a big chunk of that goes to the venue. So yeah. I, I, I think these are things that we don't really realize. And as far as the artist, I, I did a little bit more research. The artist really, the artist and promoter, they really set the price for tickets. It's not Ticketmaster or Live Nation. They don't set the price, but the artist sets it. You know, what, what do they think it's worth? And then you can obviously that obviously see that the venue makes a lot of money, which they should. They build up these stadiums and they put on the show. Um, so this is the breakdown that you see. Now, I will say that, you know, the government suing them, you know, who knows where this all goes. Obviously, that'll increase their cost to fight the lawsuit and do all this. But just be careful of what you wish for. If they get broke apart, you know, you're going to get all kinds of companies doing this. And, and, you know, do you trust in those as well? So, you know, just a question for you. So uh, I guess I'll just close with saying that, you know, Ticketmaster has a role and, and I do I do hate those fees that come on the end. Like when you click on, say, I want to buy a $80 ticket and it seems like it's uh, add 50% to it. Right. You know, but, but here you can see the fees aren't all profit for Ticketmaster. And here's the other thing. We are investors. We are owners. If you're like, oh, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't like this. Well, wh why wouldn't you want to be an owner of it if you really think Ticketmaster <laughs> makes th that much money? So let me bring up their graph because that's what we got to look at. If you want to be an owner of Ticketmaster. So here is a one year chart and you can see they dropped yesterday because of the lawsuit. But overall, right. if, if you look at this one and I'll, I'll go to the all, you know, pretty good growth. I mean, it's not not as as much as the high tech company, but overall pretty good. You can see the COVID dip. Um, and then 2022, the dip as well. But, 
you know, this is a company that can be bought. Obviously, you can get it on sale right now. Do I think the lawsuit will really go through? I mean, I don't know for sure, but I, I, I think eventually it'll get dropped, but we'll see. What do yeah, you think, Steve? Well, that, that's interesting. I think if you go back to the uh, the slide real quick, and I'll make this our thumbnail for today because it's so informative. I mean, uh, just breaking down the fee and having, you know, five of it go to ticket ticketer. Yeah, everybody would be like, sure. To, you know, make sure valid all the things you talked about so I can resell. I mean, to make sure it's valid, all that. But the, you know, 80% of that fee going to the venue, it's like, no, bake that in somewhere else, right? Uh, so I could see that kind of a little more transparency coming out of it. So, you know, make the ticket 120 or whatever, you know, get get the venue paid somewhere other way other than the actual, you know, fee for it. So, well, cool, man. Hey, I appreciate this is uh, good stuff. And I, I, are you going to be repping that look all day long? Is this Jensen day or just like Jensen, like half an hour? It's probably Jets in half an hour because it is summer and I pulled out a leather jacket. <laughs> but hey, I yeah, will you... I'll continue to wear the green t-shirt so we have green numbers through the end of the day. Okay, well Mike's doing his part. I I, I have what whoa, I have red on uh not doing my part, so I'll need to go change that immediately. Uh but hey everybody, we have a big long weekend out there. Uh it is also the most dangerous weekend uh of the year. So uh, if you're out and about, be safe and we will see you guys back on uh, Tuesday. You guys have a good one. Bye.